Amen, amen. Anybody excited to be in the house of God? She said, I am faithful. Today we're going to talk about pride will ruin you. We, we're going to talk about the problems with pride. Now, how many people in here or how many of you have a problem with pride? Raise your hand. Okay. Okay, so for the rest of you who did not raise your hand, raise your hand if you did not raise your hand that you have a problem with pride. <laughs> you see, most of us don't know that we have a problem with pride you see, a thief knows he's a thief. A liar knows he's a liar. But a person with pride, they have no clue, most of them. And this is one of the first sins, and, and God really opposes the proud. It causes Lucifer to be kicked out of heaven. It, this is what Satan did. He became proud of himself. His pride caused his fall, and it causes our fall. We'll just start right there. And in Isaiah 14, 12 and 14, the word says, How are you fallen from heaven, O who? Now you were son of the morning, now you're the son of the night because of your pride. How are you cut down to the ground? You who weaken the nations, for you have said in your heart, this is what Satan's saying. Now look at these perpendicular pronouns. I had to look that up. I know I stumbled on that. I had to go way back, you know. <laughs> perpendicular pronoun. That sounds smart. But check him out. He said, I, somebody say I, I. will ascend into heaven. Somebody say I, I, all about me, will exalt my throne above the stars of God. Somebody say I, I, I will also sit on the mount of the congregation on the farthest side of the north and it says, I, somebody say I, I, would ascend above the heights of the cloud. And last one, somebody say I, I, I would be like the most high. And because of his pride in Revelation 20 and 10, the devil who deceived him was cast into the lake of fire, brimstone, where the beast and the false prophets are. In, in the nutshell, the devil was cast into the lake of fire. All of this I, I, and I. The devil initially rebelled against God. That was his initial sin. And the root of all the problems you see in here, the root of all the problems you see on this earth, the root of all the problems you see in your life, the root of all sins is based on pride. Pride. The devil exalted himself above God, and he was cast into the fire. There are many times in life when we are supposed to do what God says, but we want to do what the world says. Because we all talk about what I been disrespected. I was done wrong. I. And God has given you a word and a map for your life, but you're still on this perpendicular pronoun. I had to say it three times. I. And that's what causes many downfalls. I was working out with a friend in the gym this weekend, Resolution Fitness. And I was over there doing curls for my girl. I'll do my curl for you. I, I see you looking at me, baby. I see you looking at me. But my friend was over there lifting weight with hate, slamming the weight against the rack and slamming it. So after a few minutes, I'm like, man, what the weights do to you, man? He said, man, what was wrong? I said, you slamming the weights like they did something to you. He said, man, I'm sorry. I didn't try, want to say nothing, man. But my 21-year-old son, he said, man, he said some harsh words to me, cussed me out, and hung the phone up on me. He said, when I see that joker this evening, I'm going to give him a two-piece. <laughs> and I was just sitting there looking at it. I can see the hurt on his eye. Yeah. And then he went with the perpendicular pronoun. He said, I am the one that put food on the table. I am the one that paid for his little league baseball game. I am the one that provided for him all his life. I'm the one that taught him how to tie his shoe. He said, I, I, and what else? I. I. And while I was sitting there, he said, man, what, what, what you think about that? I said, well, the Bible says 
in Ephesians 6 and 4. Fathers, provoke not our children. Somebody got to have some sense. Like, what you mean, preacher? You trying to give me a sermon? I'm like, no, because I had to learn this myself a few weeks ago. Because, see, now your child is grown, and then now you are grown, too. You're looking at him like a child, and that's the adaptation you got to have as a parent. Like, what you mean? I'm like, he's grown. Well, I'm still taking care of him. You don't have to. I don't owe him nothing no more. Many of us when we were 18, you knew what it was over with. <laughs> Keep it real. Your friend want to go out and do sp spend on expensive stuff. I can't. I can't call nobody. Can I get a witness? Sometimes when we think we're helping our kids, we're hurting them. And they get, the old folks say they're smelling themselves. But he kept talking about, I did this. I did that. And I wasn't feeling him because I'm feeling the word of God. See, 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 that's, that's what you need to do for folks sometimes. See, usually when we work out, I be spotting him for the weights. But today, I was spotting him for his soul. I was telling him the adaptation, the most important part, because that pride that you got with all this I, 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 what it's going to do is ruin your relationship with your son. Now, I know as a believer, you get tired of being the one that got to have some sense, but that's your job as a believer, because the devil ain't going to never stop, but you can't be walking around here all frustrated and in battles that has nothing to do with your destiny. He walked out of the gym. He called me later on that day. I said, look, the pride, the opposite of pride is humility. I said, as a father, when you talk to your son, you need to ask him, help me. Because what you're communicating, I'm not understanding. Help me what, to see what's going on. I said, there's something deeper going on than what he just said. He said, man, they had a great conversation. He diffused the situation because the daddy had it, let go of his pride and came with a little humility pie, and they worked that thing out. Pride. Pride. You never know when one of your relatives' head get cold. And that's when you see them jumping in the casket because of guilt. God has called you to be the one to defuse situations. It ain't being weak. Because see, as man, we, we think, I ain't scared of you now. <laughs> I, I raised you. And there are many people in hell and jail today because it went too far because of pride. 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 And let me tell you one thing about me and you. We got the audacity to be running our mouth about what I done done. Do God say, look what I did for you this morning. I woke you up. He can put you back to sleep. And we want to throw stuff in everybody's face. You need to be praising God and giving him the glory this morning. Come on now. Too many of us done made it home. You had one too many to drink, and you wake up in your bed, and you got to go out and see your car, and you just praise God. Thank God in spite of me. Some of y'all just need to be praising God. People getting laid off at your job, and they move you to another area and get your promotion. Somebody need to be praising God up in here. And you driving home, you get home, and you look on the news, the same road you travel. Somebody not here today. You need to be praising God. He don't tell you all he did for you every morning. That'll humble you right there. All the stuff you done done, and I done done. I just want to praise you, God. I don't want to be running my mouth on now. I want to praise God. You'll get like the devil. I, I did this. I did that. And that's why relationships end, because it's about I. But boy, we just want to help us today. Wait, rest up on your feet. This is what our sermon is based on today. Before destruction, a man's heart is what? Haughty. But humility comes before what? Ain't that good news? Pride don't come before honor. <laughs> Humility comes before honor. And last one, 16 and 18. Pride goes before what? And a what? Haughty what? Before the who? You may be seated. Pride will ruin you. you at first, you, you, you're, you're haughty. You, 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 you puffed up. You, 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 you 100. You, you ready for it. Before destruction. And the Bible speaks against that. I want you to look over your life today, this morning. I asked you how many people here have a problem with pride. Only a few, few raised. And then when I mentioned them, how many people didn't raise their hand, raise your hand, that you got a problem with pride. You bust out laughing. I'm, I'm going to tell you why. You need to look over your life. What are the consequences of pride? 
And I ain't talking about having pride in your work. If you're supposed to sweep the floor, sweep the corner too. If you're going to do something, do it right. We're, we're, we're talking about that haughty pride. We're talking about that egotistical thing that we have that God calls us not to have. God wants us to have pride, but not that kind of egotistical pride. And he said that pride would destroy you. Now, today, let's go ahead and define pride. Today, what we're talking about in that pride, and we're just going to define it as this right here. It's an attitude of what? I don't need you, God. My life is going good right now because of my excellence. Your life is going good because God has been blessing you. Go to Forest Generator and go to the emergency room. And, and, and sometimes we get so puffed up that things are going good, and it's only because of God. And look, we act like we deserve it, and God is the one that gave it to you, and it leads you to a spirit of ungratefulness to God. I can tell when you have a lot of independence. This is a question I may ask you. How often do you pray? Because you didn't wake yourself up this morning. How often do you pray? How many people stood up on their own this morning? You need to be praising God. How many people walked to your own car this morning? You need to be praising God. You can brush your own teeth. Praising God. Man, and we act like we just done something so spectacular. There's people out here with different elements, that, and they did not cause it on themselves. You need to be praising God. We are ungrateful if you're not praying every day and saying, thank you, God. You are ungrateful. Like Lakeisha said, when people be good to you, they ain't got to be good to you. You need to say thank you. God ain't got to be good to you. We're so ungrateful. That's, that's like the guy that's riding in his hoopty, and he hates his car. Well, that's like the guy who is walking would love to have that car. That's like the guy who walking, he hates that he walking. But he could be in a wheelchair. Like the guy in the wheelchair, he mad that he in a wheelchair. But he could be six feet under. What I'm saying, we all got the time to sit here and say, God, I just want to thank you. Lord, I just want to thank you for what you're doing in my life. Praise God. And the last one we're going to point out, you esteeming ourselves as being better than others. Nobody is better than nobody else. And if you think you are, you are wrong. You are where you are today because God gave you the strength. If you got a nice car, nice house, nice salary, pension, and all that, it's because God gave you the strength, he gave you the power, and he put great people in your life. Lord, I thank you. It's only because of God. Let me give some indicators of pride before we get started. Here go one of them. You are a person with pride if you cannot accept constructive criticism. If you always got an alibi, if it's always somebody else's fault, you got a problem with growth. Now, I know you probably in here thinking about your spouse, but your spouse thinking about you too. <laughs> So you see, somebody head pop, somebody name popped up in your in your head, and they think the same thing about you too. I'm gonna leave that alone right there. I don't want to start that. Next up, you always want to be the center of what? I saw two examples yesterday, and I just want to point them out. Number one, they had this guy on here named Jamal Bryant. He gets up and he speaks about Kevin Samuels who passed away last week. He was a relationship guru, you know, and, 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 and some ladies last week, he had said some things. I saw two of his episodes, and he was on point with, with accountability, and he talked to a guy, accountability. I haven't seen all of them. But I do know this right here. I'm not debating that right there. I do know us men, we just need to what? Sometimes we need to just be quiet. Yeah. So, so, so Jamal gets up there, and there was a rumor that they had a, this guy supposed to be Kevin Samuel, I would talk about a high value man, a man that make over a certain amount, and he was considered himself as one. And he was like, ladies, this guy said y'all need to get rid of, you know, get y'all self together, and he need a GoFundMe account. And he just went into a sermon, and I'm like, man, you, you, you beating on a dead man. And I said, let me Google this guy, because sometimes we think we better than others, right? I said, let me Google this guy. Okay. So I Googled that, that, that and 
that GoFundMe page that was out there was by a scammer. This hypocrite didn't even have enough audacity or, or to look up what he was talking about. He heard just a little bit and ran with it. So what I says to me, that's something in your heart already to run with it. And so I said, let me see, since he's basically saying this guy who's supposed to be high value is broke, let me look up both of them, right? And I looked it up, and it says that Jamal Bryant is worth about 500000 and Kevin is worth about $4 million. I said, okay, let me look that up. I started thinking to myself, I said, let me look up some more stuff. And then it came up with Jamal Bryant. I know Kevin Sanders ain't killed nobody. Jamal Bryant, who's this preacher, it says according to his, someone else, he got six or seven baby mamas. What am I saying about that is nobody got no room to be talking about nobody else. Because you don't drink, you may be gossiping all the time. Because you don't gospel, you may be over here fornicating over here. I'm saying that we, when you call somebody out, when you point your finger, three more going to be pointing back at you. I saw another one. And then, you know, he done got, you know, some other stuff and all kind of scandals he done made in. Now, I'm just talking about people who call people out. Just watch when people call people out. Now, in Jackson now, you know, Kenneth Stokes, I don't know if y'all know him. But Kenneth Stokes is a councilman. Since I was at Jackson State in the 90s, man, he always calling somebody out. And he done been involved with everything. Those are the people that always be into something calling other people out. I ain't going to, he, he calls people out. So he called out the mayor, uh, Lamumble. I don't know him personally. So he said the mayor, they got some bribery going on. And he done been in several bribes over the years, right? He said the mayor is smoking that dope. He smoked weed. And he said he need to be arrested. I said, okay, that's what he said about this, man. Let me, let me check about some of my friends posted something this weekend. This is, this is Kenny Stokes. He's at an event. This is him wearing, he's wearing this suit. Right here. Here's my point. He said the, the mayor got some bribery going. Well, whoever sold you that suit got some bribery going. <laughs> you need to start shopping at Joe Goyon Fashion. <laughs> and you told the mayor smoke dope. You had to be smoking some dope to buy that suit. <laughs> I can't take you seriously. What I'm saying, when you start pointing your finger at one person, three more points, what? Those are some indicators that we cannot be, we have no room to be trying to put ourselves above somebody else. And God will cast you down into the fire. That's my whole point. You're vain about your appearance. You know, I'm the best, I'm the most handsome McDonald worker in Hattiesburg. Okay, what, what are we going with this? Girl, I was dressed up so fly last night. I had that dress, and it was hitting in all places. And I took me a picture like, why, why, why you got to look back at it? Why you got to turn to the camera and look back? What, what's all this right here? Why you can't say take a picture? Why, 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 why? And why you got to have a dress that's fitting in every place, and you went to a kindergarten graduation? There's a time and a place. You don't like associating with ordinary people and unpopular people. I was hanging out with City Councilman Smith. I was hanging out with the people in this area. I was I, name dropping. You're fond of name dropping. And, and, and we drop names to put people down, and we don't even know it sometimes. And at times, we're not teachable. If you're not teachable, you've got a problem with pride. A few weeks ago, my wife told me, Lakeisha, that I need to learn some things and do some Things and stuff just being boring, you know. She said, I just, my schedule's so mundane. She said, you need to try some new stuff. I'm going to take off on Monday, and let's do some self-care. Okay, cool. She said, let's get a couple massage then. I said, cool. And I'm going to line up a couple things. Good deal. So we get in there for the massage, right? And as we go in there, they told us to lay down on a different table, and I heard this man say, and I ain't know no man supposed to try to massage me. That changed the game right there. I went and learned some new thing. And he going to say, Miss Fluka, what kind of massage you want? No kind. <laughs> Player, you better get somebody else. I'm not, no, nah, we ain't doing that. So, my wife, he, he's a good Christian man. I don't give a rat's hat. He ain't touching my back. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> you insecure? No, I don't care what you call it. <laughs> he ain't touching my back. Ain't no man putting no paws on my jaws. Ain't none of that. I ain't, I ain't going. You call it pride what you want to. <laughs> I'm old school. 
We all school, even we shake hands, we men, we we hug each other, you got the elbow in the front. Elbow to your chest. Ain't nothing else touching now. You know what I'm saying? We don't do that. You call it pride you want to, but I ain't even teachable. <laughs> I'm going to leave that alone and get off this. And then we're going to go after that to get a pedicure. The lady told me to put my foot in the water for a few minutes. I'm checking my email. And a dude come sit down. I did him like the tumbo. He said, well, girl, well, woman, yeah, you better go. <laughs> they say it's pride or insecure. I don't care what you call it. All right, so, so the next one is, you don't like to be surpassed by anyone. Don't you know a friend? They don't mind you doing good, but they don't want you doing better than them. Now, you've been supporting them all them years. As soon as you pass them a friend, relatives, or whatever, it's a problem. And the last one, you think you're too important to do mundane things. These young folks, man, I done hired a few of them lately these last few years, and they come in, work one week and want a promotion. That they want to be a lieutenant and they ain't even been a good soldier yet. And you're sitting there like, all I got to say, you know, keep living, man. I'm going to let you go. I got to let you go, man. Come in and want to run something. Last one. You are critical of those who do better than you. These are some indicators of a person with pride. All right, let's get into our sermon before I get started too much. Pride will do what? It will ruin you. Why would pride ruin you? Number one, it dishonors God. It dishonors God. See, 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 you got to be humble or you will stumble. This is what the word says. In Proverbs 16 and 7, he's, God hates six and seven things. That's what it says. But the number one thing that God hates, right there, he said, things, he said, these six things, he said that the Lord hates. And it said seven are an abomination unto him. The number one on his hate list is a proud look. You don't be humble. You're going to stumble. That's number one on the list. We have pride all the time. Let me put it on the bottom shelf for you. Have you ever had a discussion with your spouse? A discussion that all the neighbors heard? A cussing contest. You and your family, ain't none of y'all hitting on me. You know, you know what I'm talking about? You know what that is? That's two egos going against each other. If you take the ego off the throne and you put God on the throne, you'll be able to solve that problem. If you put that problem in the middle and you all stay on this problem and discuss this problem, Instead of attacking each other, you can solve that problem. If Jesus is in her, and if Jesus is in you, the Jesus in her would not be attacking the Jesus in you. But when you got that ego up in you and Satan up in you, that's when everything clashes and is not of God. And God says, that dishonors me. And God says, look at this right here. He opposes it in James 4 and 6. Therefore, it says, God opposes the what? But he gives grace to the who? God opposes that. If you ever play sports, when you have an opponent that opposes you, and you don't want God as your opponent, because you're going to lose every time. (laughs) Come on, you're going to lose every time. I know all y'all ain't been in church all your life, but... I, I remember when Lil Wayne and Baby had a song out, Stunting Like Your Daddy. And, and, and Wayne said, show me my opponent, show me my opponent. Well, you don't want God as your opponent because you know what? Anytime you go against your heavenly daddy, you're going to lose. That's why you should think about it. I ain't scared of you, and I can tell you a piece of my mind, and I can go there. But I don't want God as my opponent because you lose in the end. I've seen too many guys get into it with pride, and somebody's gone. Somebody went to, well, I don't know if it went to hell, but hell or jail. But both of them had kids. Now, your kids are at home by themselves or with mama. Here's the sad part. You, one of y'all in hell, one in jail, 
You don't know the next man going to come by and going to love your kids or try to love on your kids. Come on now. You got too much pride, and it causes destruction. Another thing that it calls is dishonor God, and the next one it said, it divides society. Oh, let's look at it right now. Every argument you had was because of pride. Every divorce that has been is because of pride. Every war that has been is because of pride. Every church split was because of pride. Proverbs 13, 10, it says, where there is who? I'm going to say it again. Where there's a mess. Where there is what? Say it one more time. Where there is what? There is what? Pride. But wisdom is found in those who take advice. Who are you going to take advice from? The world or God? You got to make a decision today, beloved. Do you want the, the consequences of pride or the benefits of humility? The opposite of pride is humility. Somebody got to have some sense. And God has caused you to do that. I've seen too many church split when the deacon would get into it with the preacher. Pride. I've seen sisters get into it with each other. Pride. I've seen divorces happen. Pride. And you know what they always say? The, the perpendicular, perpendicular pronoun. I'm about to get it right. I. I did this. I didn't get the attention. I want to be in control. I. And God said he opposes that. You got a war right now. Russia versus Ukraine. It's because of one man pride and all these people getting killed. Putin just pride before destruction. And it says in Proverbs 29, man pride will bring him who? Low. But a humble spirit, he will attain what? I want honor in my life. And then it says right here, when pride comes, disgrace follows. But with humility comes what? In the Bible, Moses' own sister came against him. Don't you know your siblings will come against you sometimes? Marion had this venomous tongue. And Marion, she went to Moses' brother Aaron and said, Moses is doing this. Moses is doing this. She was mad with Moses. Because he married a woman outside of their country. And she hated him for that. Because she wasn't from Oak Grove. She was from Palmer's Crossing. She went in and started all this stuff. But see, she wanted to be the center of. And just try to mess the whole family up. And God called Aaron, Marin, and also Moses to the tabernacle. And he, he, he sentenced her with leprosy. And now she got to get outside the camp because it's contagious. And Moses and his brother looked at their sister in tears, seeing the flesh fall off her in tears as she went through this right here. And Moses prayed for his sister. God, please help her. She was out of the camp for 10 days, and God healed her after that. Don't you know when your enemy go against you, you have to pray to God for them? Things? God don't hurt them that bad. When pride comes, the grace follows. And that's what happened to her. See, 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 the people with pride, I'm telling you right now, they're going to play themselves. She played herself. Because God don't like ugly. Next time your enemy get do something, you, you look, at her, look at her and him like, Whoopi Goldberg. Like, I feel sorry for you, baby. For, you mess with God's child. I ain't going to do it to you. But I'm going to let God do it. You're going to run into the wrong one. And God going to give you the business. Pride destroys. It dishonors God. And then, like Marion, it destroys souls. It destroys your soul. Beloved, the Bible says in Proverbs 18 and 12, once again, before destruction, a man heart is who? Haughty. But humility comes before what? We look at this word destruction. Before destruction, you all puffed up. <laughs> before destruction, couldn't nobody tell you nothing. Before destruction, you had it all going on. And now the destruction is your breaking, the crushing, the shattering of your spirit. And you'll walk around here hurt, disgusted, and busted because of the pride. The world will tell you, the world will tell you if your son talking crazy to you, you need to give them a business. If somebody come at you, you come at that's what the world says. But God says humility is the way to obtain honor. If you look over your life, you've been humble, taking a high road, and you, see, see, some people think when you take the high road, 
that you holding this stuff in. No, you're not, baby. You give it to God and you're praying for them and you release yourself from that. You holding it in, you're gonna kill yourself. That's gonna be your heart attack by yourself. What I'm saying is you're humble. Oh, you tripping. Okay, okay, I understand. And I'm gonna give it to God. I release it from me. And now you gotta deal with God. And I you know what? Two weeks later, I gotta pray for you. Give it to God. What are you holding on to that? What do you mean to give to God? You're trying to make it work yourself. It ain't gonna work. If God works it, that's the only way to work. Let me share something with you before I let you go. I got a good friend. Ten years ago. He got two sisters. Two sisters got two sons. Two sons get into a fight. Then you got an older sister. And you got a younger sister. Two cousins, first cousin in the fight. One cousin stabbed the other cousin in the arm. They took off her. They ended up pressing charges with the court. And the judge sentenced the one who stabbed. Sentenced him to probation. He was in college. Two sisters was there. And the older sister said to the younger sister, let's don't fall out of this. Let's just come out. And she said, sister, I'll see you later. The younger sister looked at the older sister. I said, I hope I never see you again. Two months later, the older sister was killed in a tragic accident. The younger sister cried. This was on July the 13th. The younger sister cried and they called her brother every year, like the first day, just crying with the guilt because she had too much pride and anger to let it go back then. And now she's living the rest of her life in hurt and pain. know if something happened when you're real. Don't fall out. Be the bigger person. It's okay. Don't never hold it in, but give it to God and you keep moving. Now, when you look back on your life, have you still been blessing you? Ain't you still been rising up? Don't you still got clothes? Shoes? Let me tell you something about some haters out there. Every time somebody hate on you, what you need to do? You need to look at your bank account and see the way it affected at all. If it don't affect it at all, you just say, thank you, God. The people we worry about can't only affect our bank account. Don't hold on. It destroys your soul. Pride. God has given us what we need. And it says, therefore, God says, oppose the pride and give grace to the humble. And last one, the Lord detests the pride. And they will surely be what? They will surely be humble. Love you here today. Let it go. I don't know if you need to let that go. Let it go. Let it go. I know you're tired of taking a high road, but when they go low, you go high. And you keep going high. And you just look at your life each month and see how God keep bringing you up. You look at your life each month and see how God keep blessing you. Because anybody that have that much hatred in their soul, all it does is destroy their soul. You got too much in front of you to destroy your own soul. Follow the word of God. Don't follow what's going on in this world. Because this world leads to destruction. Pride will ruin you. Pride dishonors God, and pride divides society, and pride destroys the soul. There is nothing good with pride. Pride gives you hypertension. It messes up your blood pressure. Pride gives you a headache. Pride causes heart attacks. Pride calls people to move away from you. Pride calls division. There's nothing good about that pride. An egotistical, haughty pride. But humility, it causes love. It causes your soul to be a little lighter. It causes you to smile at times. And it causes you to give it to God. And then you have to pray for your enemies because God is saying what he said is always going to be so. We hope you enjoyed the message today. It is now time for tithes and offering. There are three ways to give. You can use our cash app at the bottom of the screen. You can also text and it's at the bottom of the screen. Or if you would like, we have a drop box here at the church where you can drop off your giving. Now, if something was said today that moved you and you want to give your life to Christ, we would like for you to call us at 601-408-7156. We want to talk to you about your decision today. Thank you for tuning in this morning at South 28. We hope and pray something was said that was enlightening to your life. Throughout the week, you can host a watch party or share this with a friend. 
Look, we hope and pray to see you back next week. Be blessed, my friend.